The Wrestling Observer Newsletter Hall of Fame 2022 edition is out. Thank God. On the front page of the Wrestling Observer Newsletter website, WrestlingObserver.com, F4WOnline.com. Subscribers can read the whole thing. Bunch of great bios in there. A lot of great stories. And uh, all, you can see how everybody who was on the ballot for the Observer Hall of Fame did. And uh, spoiler here, Hall of Fame balloting results. The four acts going into the Wrestling Observer Hall of Fame in 2022. Kazuchiko Kata, 92% of the vote. Los Brazos went in with 86% of the vote, having only gotten 53% of the vote last year. Jim Crockett Jr. went in 82% of the vote after only getting 36% of the vote last year. Don Owen going in 61% of the vote after getting 53% of the vote last year, but... Uh, the jumps for Jim Crockett Jr. and Los Brazos, uh, particularly Jim Crockett Jr., I mean, bruh, what happened this year? <laughs> hey, what happened? 40, 46%, and look, it's no, the... No, 36% well, I know, to 82 That's what I'm saying, a 46% jump, and look at the jump that Los Brazos has, and... You hate to put it this way, but it is put this way mostly, the death bump. And Jim Crockett Jr. passed away, uh, Los Brazos de Plata, Super Porky, passed away last year. When that happens, a lot of times, a lot of light gets shed on somebody's career, and especially the positives of one's career, and people tend to look at other people in a different way. I, I think a great example of this, to me, at least my personal example of this, is always Eddie Guerrero, in that I always kind of point to Chris Benoit. It always surprised me, not that Benoit was in before Eddie Guerrero, but that Eddie Guerrero's point total and that his vote total was so low. That's what always surprised me. He ultimately did get in after he had passed away and people had their warm, fuzzy memories. Obviously, that tends to take place. We see a great jump. What also, I think, pushed some of these numbers was the fact that there were going to be some people that were going to fall off the ballot. Ole Anderson, Sergeant Slaughter, they were two of the people, and we saw a big bump up in Sergeant Slaughter as well, too. It's only 5%, but when you look at some of his numbers over the last several years, you can see where he did get a significant bump. But when it comes to a lot of Hall of Fames, including the Wrestling Observer Newsletter Hall of Fame, especially when it comes to the Baseball Hall of Fame here in America, it always drives me nuts when there is somebody that is such an obvious no-brainer and you still have people as members of the voting community that just refuse to put somebody in for whatever reason, and Kazuchika Okada was a no-brainer. Uh, Kenta Kobashi, the year he went in, was a absolute no-brainer, and no one will probably ever touch Kobashi's vo vote total at this point with the, what was it, Brian, 96%? What, what, what was he voted in with? Okada got 90, who? Who are you talking about, Kobashi or? Kobashi. Uh, Kobashi was 98 yeah, Kabashi was 98, Liger was 95, Okada was 92. They, I'm still trying to figure out who would not vote for Kazuchika Okada. What is the excuse? Because he's still active? Because he's too young? I think that's absolute craziness. By the letter of what you're supposed to be voting on, Kazuchika Okada, like all of those other men, no-brainer no Hall of Famers. I mean, even The Rock, in some ways, because of 2007, you could even almost argue against him, possibly, in some way, a lot easier to me than you could, could go against it's Kazuchika Okada, and I think that's insanity in itself. But well, listen, we don't know we don't know who all the voters are, but I do know true. that uh, when Dave kind of sort of revealed that Okada was going in on accident on Observer Radio, I mean, he did say that uh, he did not get 100 percent of the vote, and he had heard from a few people that didn't vote for Okada, and I believe his exact words were, "There wasn't one good reason." I couldn't see it myself. Can't see it myself. Can you? Can you come up with a, a good, me? solid reason? Listen, of course I've not. I've been watching wrestling for a long time. I've watched wrestling from all over the world. I haven't obviously seen everything. 
but I've watched a lot. And Okada is either, he is either the greatest professional wrestler I have ever seen, or he's he's easily top five. When he had that run a couple of years ago, I watched those Okada matches, and I grew up with Shawn Michaels and Ric Flair, and I've seen Kobashi and Misawa and Omega. Name anyone you want in this. Dude, Tanahashi. Any huge name. Tanahashi. Tanahashi. Like, I've seen all of them, okay? I never saw somebody who was as good as Okada. Okay, fine. So uh, maybe you say, well, he's not the best. You know, I think Ric Flair's the best or whatever. Okay, fine. He's not a Hall of Famer? Bro. It's crazy. Of course he's a Hall of Famer. So he's in. And uh, Los Brazos, Jim Crockett Jr., Don Owen, all in. Uh, Poor Mystico. Poor Caristico. Listen, here's the thing with Mystico, everybody. If you're looking at the Hall of Fame... And, you know, uh, Mystico, yes, he went to WWE, and it was an abject, horrific failure, okay? But you guys, some of you don't understand how big uh, Mystico was before he went to WWE. Find the last luchador that won Wrestler of the Year. Oh, you never will, because he's the only one ever who did. He was a massive draw, a mainstream name in Mexico. Now, obviously, a lot of people only remember he went to WWE and he didn't do well and he wasn't very good and he sucked and he just was gone. But uh, he went to WWE. They don't know what to do with anybody. So anyway, the point is, he got 59.7% of the vote this year after getting 33% last year. And so essentially, one person didn't vote for Mystico and he did not make it into the Hall of Fame. Every Sucks vote counts. to be that guy. Yeah, hey, look. Yeah, every, every vote counts, bros. It's wild. We're going into, what, 17, 18 years now since Mystico was at his peak. But, I mean, and I know, look, there are some people listening to us right now. They weren't even born yet when Mystico was at his peak. But it was appointment television. Any of the CMLL shows, especially what was the next a couple days later out, Channel 52, uh, where, where it would come on. And, I mean, it was appointment television, Friday night appointment television because of Mystico. That's He was that big. He was that good. He was that big of a star. I mean, it was amazing how big Mystico was and how much he crossed over. So I don't know if he ever makes it in. I think he ultimately he will. But that damage of going to WWE, I mean, that absolutely hurt him. It hurt him big time. Now, also, too, back to Jim uh, Crockett Jr., the, you know, the big boost that he got. Granted, I am a little bit biased, you know, with the, the Mid-Atlantic stuff. But to me, he was always unnaturally low, to be frank with you. I mean, Jim Crockett Jr. and his father, you could argue, could have went in in the initial class. Obviously, they didn't. But I think both of them being in the Cadillac of wrestling territories, what he was able to oversee, at the end of the day, everybody died. Every promoter died at the hands of Vince McMahon, every single last one of them, every booker, as we see now with Vince McMahon, who at the end of the day, no matter what he wants to call himself, that's how everybody who was ever involved in wrestling will look at him. He's the final say. He's the booker. You see what he's turning into right now. What a mess. What an embarrassment that is with his vision right now, frankly. So I think sometimes we hold that against some of these older promoters like like Jim Crockett Jr., who had the Cadillac of wrestling territories. Literally, it was the best wrestling territory and his biggest cities were charlotte greensboro norfolk and roanoke for heaven's sake so you know i always thought he was way low but you know what bottom line at the end of the day he's in and i think there are some people that may never get in that deserve to be in but everybody that is in absolutely deserves their place so congratulations to everybody back in a moment observer live the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. I'm Mike Sembravivi, also of WrestlingObserver.com. Hey, listen, we have a guy here who's all up in, uh, he's all up in old uh, Mystico's grill about botching spots. Oh, yeah? And listen, he did botch a lot of spots. But you know what? Before he lost his mind and murdered his family, I was friends with Chris Benoit for many years in the early 2000s. And uh, he had gone to Mexico. And uh, he'd gone to Japan, and he had gone to, he'd wrestled all over America and uh, North America. And one day I said, how, like, how are you able to, like, work all of these different styles, like lucha and, and everything? 
And uh, you know what he told me? He goes, I didn't do any lucha. I just went to Mexico and I just wrestled. So basically all the luchadors did lucha around him and he just wrestled like Chris Benoit. He wasn't in there trying to do like whatever. So the point of this story is Mystico is this massive, massive, massive superstar in Mexico. WWE wants a new Rey Mysterio. So instead of taking the guy, Mystico, and bringing him to WWE as Mystico and having him work Mystico matches with, like, other people that can do lucha, they they took the guy, they changed his name, they wanted him to work American-style versus Americans with a little bit of high-flying in there. Well, of course it didn't work! That's the point! Now, granted, Mystico had some issues of his own. He, uh, he didn't want to learn any English. He uh, had some behavioral issues. But the point of this is, if you would have taken uh, Ric Flair in his absolute prime, when he was the best wrestler in the world, arguably, mid-'80s, and, uh, and he got signed by CMLL, and they brought in Ric Flair, and they said, okay, we're gonna, first off, we're going to change your name. You're going to be uh, Blanco, whatever. And uh, you're, you can't work the Ric Flair style. We want you to uh, you know do headlocks on the other side and uh, flips and rolls. And let me tell you something about Ric Flair. Guy don't roll very well. So, and then they go in there and they want him to work Lucha style with a different name. And he, it totally doesn't work. He doesn't get over. I mean, are you going to go, oh, that Ric Flair, he actually sucked. No. And you know what? No one in their right mind would have done that with Ric Flair. There's exactly one company who would want to take the biggest superstar in Mexico, bring him in, change everything about him, and then not figure out why the guy didn't get over. So anyway, I don't want to hear it. Obviously, the guy had a lot of problems. He wasn't perfect. But man, that guy got screwed in WWE. You know, I remember there being a time where wrestling was so down in Japan and wrestling was especially so down in New Japan that people were wondering, would we ever see somebody get elected to the Hall of Fame? What would the fates of the Yuji Nagatas and the Minoru Suzukis be? And then we have obviously seen the ascension of New Japan and the entrances of Hiroshi Tanahashi, Shinsuke Nakamura, as well as people like Minoru Suzuki and Yuji Nagata. And now, when you look at the landscape, Roman Reigns is going to be added next year uh, on the ballot. Becky Lynch is going to be on the ballot for the first time next year. It is going to be very interesting now to see where WWE and where today's stars end up. You know, CM Punk did not get a large bump, even though he doubled his total. He had such a low total last year that, you know, it's not really up that high. But when you look at the WWE side, you ask yourself, man, Edge, Randy Orton, uh, these types of people, will they ever have really a shot to get in? Well, what they do in WWE, well, how they are, are handled, you know, in their booking and how they're presented on television, how much will be held against them not being able to, to <laughs> evade what happens to them at the control of WWE. It'll be interesting to see, you know, how people react to them as the years go on. So next year, a lot of tag teams are going to be added to the ballot. And that's going to be interesting for me. Somebody who's a big fan of tag teams, somebody who was very influenced by tag teams, by the Tully Blanchards and Arn Andersons, by the the Steiners, you know, we're going to have Ricky Steamboat and Jay Youngblood, Akira Tawe and Toshiaki Kawada. Tawe, the one pillar that has not been voted into uh, the Wrestling Observer Newsletter Hall of Fame as a singles, as a tag team. I mean, to me, he's almost undeniable. Antonio Rocca and uh, Argentina Rocca and Miguel Perez, same way. They're the biggest drawing tag team in the history of pro wrestling other than the Road Warriors. I mean, you know, to me, they're a no-brainer. So it'll be very interesting to see tag teams and how they're looked at as we continue on. Because here's the one thing that seems to be pretty consistent. Even though we have a lot of great tag teams now we like to talk about, they are still never going to be, and they're not at the forefront in the way that I think a lot of people would like them to be, and I think as, as much as they could be. So tag teams always getting the short end of the stick. Again, maybe it's just that as a Canadian who has always had health insurance. This doesn't seem, Max, smart enough to this, be a big this deal. This is going to go to the best of right here, Lance. Yeah. You're being corralled away by uh, by this dog. By a dog trying to eat my wife's uh, boots. Oh, man. Oh, they said they must be tasty. Yeah, if my wife gets home and her good leather boots are chewed up, I'm dead. You'll be chewed up next.
Yeah, I'll be living outside with the dog. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.